This is Mr. Masonette, and what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is we're going to practice solving word problems involving systems of equations. So let's go ahead and get started. So this problem reads that the length of a rectangle is equal to three times its width. Write a system of equations that can be used to find the dimensions of the rectangle if the perimeter is 32 centimeters. And then we have to figure out the length and the width of that rectangle. So with systems of equations dealing with word problems, sometimes it is difficult to figure out where to start. Well, what I like to do is to determine what two variables we're going to use in order to solve. So to figure out what variables we are going to use, what we should do is figure out what it is we are trying to find. Well, we know that we are dealing with the length and the width of a rectangle and that we have to find those two things. So the two variables that we are going to use are going to be L for length and W for width. Now, after you have declared your variables, what we have to do is express what we know about the problem algebraically. Sometimes we might straight out give you an equation and other times you have to use a little bit of inference or prior knowledge to set up other equations. So in this problem, they are saying that the length of a rectangle is equal to or the same thing as three times its width. And that's something that we can express algebraically. So we can say that the length represented by L is equal to three times the width. So right away, we have one of our two equations in the system. And now what we have to do is figure out what our second equation is going to be. And the second equation is not that straightforward. Now, it does say that the perimeter of this rectangle is 32 centimeters. So we know that the perimeter is equal to 32 centimeters. We cannot write P equals 32 for an equation though, because that would give us a third variable and we can only have two variables in this situation. So what we have to do is express perimeter using width and length. Now we do know that a rectangle has four sides and two of those sides are the length of the rectangle. So we can say that two lengths plus two sides which are the width when added together will be equal to the given perimeter of 32 centimeters. So this is our second equation in the system. Now notice our first equation has the length isolated already. So we can say that length is the same thing as 3w, which means we can substitute the length in the other equation with 3w. So let's go ahead and rewrite this equation as 2 times 3w plus 2w is equal to 32. So all we did is we substituted the length in this equation for 3w because in the problem it is given that the length is the same thing as 3 multiplied by w. Now let's go ahead and simplify this equation a bit. We're going to double 3w which is 6w plus 2w equals 32. And now we can go ahead and combine these two terms here. 6w and 2w is of course 8w and that is equal to 32. And now we're going to divide both sides by 8 to isolate this w. And we have determined that w is equal to 32 divided by 8, which is 4. So now we know that the width of our rectangle is equal to 4. All right, now we know that the length is equivalent to 3 times the width. And because the width is 4, the length is going to be 12. Now we can be more formal though. We can go ahead and rewrite that equation and substitute 4 in 4w. And that would give us the length is equal to 12. So the width of the rectangle is 4 and the length is equal to 12. All right, let's go ahead and solve another example. All right, this problem reads that tickets to a movie cost $5 for adults and $3 for students. A group of friends purchased 18 tickets for $82. 
how many adult tickets and how many student tickets did they buy? All right, so just like I did with the first problem, what I'm gonna do is declare what our variable should be. And that is gonna be dictated by what you are looking for in the problem. And we are looking for the number of adult tickets, which I am going to use A to represent that amount, and the number of student tickets, which I'm going to use S to represent that amount. So now that we have declared our variables, let's go ahead and figure out what we know about the problem and express that algebraically. Now, one piece of information that sticks out about this problem is that the group of friends purchased a total of 18 tickets. And we know that this is a total and that amount must be a combination of adult tickets and student tickets. So we can express that algebraically as the number of adult tickets purchased plus the number of student tickets purchased is gonna be a total or equal to 18 tickets in total. Now the other total that is given in the problem that we have to deal with is $82. We know that this is a total cost of all the tickets purchased. So I know for sure that 82 can be written on this side of our equal sign and then we know that the amount spent for adults plus the amount spent on students is going to total $82. Now we know that it is $5 for one adult ticket, but we know that they paid for more than one adult ticket. Now if we knew the number of adult tickets, we would just multiply that number by five and we can express that algebraically. We can simply write $5 multiplied by the number of adult tickets represented by A is going to give us the total amount spent on adult tickets. And the same thing is true for student tickets. We know that the number of student tickets represented by S would be multiplied by $3 to get the total amount spent on student tickets. And then when you add those two totals together, that would give us a total of $82. So now we have both equations in our system. Now to solve the system, we can either use substitution or we can use elimination. It just depends on what you're most comfortable with. Now in this situation, I'm just gonna use a little bit of substitution here. What I'm gonna do is take this first equation and isolate the A variable. Because if you use substitution, one of the two equations has to have one variable that is isolated on one side of the equation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this S here and I'm gonna write it on the other side of the equation. What you're allowed to do as long as you write it as its inverse. So I'm gonna write minus S on this side. So now we have the equation A is equal to 18 minus S. Now that we know what A is equal to, 18 minus S in this case, I'm gonna substitute 18 minus S in for a to the other equation. So let's go ahead and do just that. I'm gonna take five and substitute a with 18 minus s and then add three s and set it equal to 82. All right, now what we're gonna do is distribute this five and five times 18 is 90 and five times negative s would be negative five s plus three s equals 82. All right, now we can simplify the left side of our equation a bit more. So let's bring down this 90, which is a constant and combine these two variable terms, negative five s and positive three s is negative two s and that is equal to 82. And now I'm gonna take this positive 90 and write it as its inverse on the other side, which is negative or minus 90. And that leaves us with negative 2s on the left. And on the right, this is negative eight. And to get rid of this coefficient, we always divide coefficients by themselves to turn it into positive one, which gives us s equals negative eight divided by negative two, which is positive four. So the number of student tickets sold is four. Now we know that the number of adult tickets plus student tickets is equal to 18. 
because there were 18 tickets purchased altogether. And now that we know there are four student tickets, we can determine the number of adult tickets because the total is 18. So A must be 14 because if we isolated this A here by subtracting four on the other side, that would give us A equals 14. So now we know in this system that the number of student tickets is four and the number of adult tickets is equal to 14. Hey, I just wanna say thanks for checking out this math tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and enable notifications so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials to my math channel. Till next time, this is Shane Masonette with Masonette Math.